All right, so now we've covered all this, and now let's do some interesting stuff with what we've learned. So reinterpreting Euler's formula. So now let's consider the famous Euler's formula by, by Leonard uh, Euler, uh, and reinterpret it as a two by two rotation matrix. So this is the famous formula. E to the i x is equal to cosine x plus i times sine x. And uh, you can prove this using power series for, uh, for e to the x. Plug in i, x, and then separate them. You get cosine x, sine x, and so on. I may do that. I'm not sure if I've done it or not in my videos, but it's pretty straightforward. Anyway, so this is the famous formula. Let's box this in. Or, and now write it, or ver vs, write it in the different format. e to the i, x. So we don't need to circle e to the i x equals to in notation format. I mean in a two by two matrix format. As a two by two, this is number. This is all it is: cosine x, and then there's i sine x. So in other words, that's imaginary component. This is the complex number. That's the real part, and there's a is exactly that's exactly the uh, complex number. And here, I scroll all the way back up. So z equals a plus b i. Yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah, the Wikipedia just has the i in front. Whether they use that notation. But anyways, this is just a rotation matrix. Cosine x, negative sine x, and this is going to be sine x, and this is going to be cosine x. Like that. So yes, <laughs> fascinating stuff. All right, and now let's take a look at Euler's identity. I'll just uh, write this uh, formula, bold this one. So that's uh, bolded. So when, when x is equals to pi, we get Euler's identity. And Euler's identity, well, let's write this here. So at x equals to pi, this is radians, equals to the same thing as saying 180 degrees in yeah, degrees. So what we get is uh, for cosine pi, this equals to negative 1. Then sine of pi equals to 0. And we could see this from our trusty uh, setup over here. So there's sine, and this is pi right there. So a sine is zero, sine pi equals zero, and then this one here is at the, at the bottom there, that's cosine. Cosine pi equals negative one. All right, so we have those values, and now we can throw them inside our rotation matrix, and we get uh, e to the i pi equals two cosine, well, actually before the rotation matrix, this is just the uh, mainstream, or just the standard derivation, we're just using this right here for now. All right, so e to the i, e to the i, i pi, where x is pi, equals to cosine pi plus i sine pi. So in other words, this vanishes as zero. So this just goes to, yeah, zero. I'll just put this here. This equals to uh, one, I mean negative one, plus zero. And this is interpreted as, well, we could move this over, yeah, so what we get is basically e to the i pi equals to negative 1, or you can move this over to the other side. And this is how it's typically written, e to the i pi, or actually here, I just erased that, move this over here, so move it here, and just write e to i pi. So move the, pl the 1 over here, so it would be plus 1, e to the i pi plus 1 equals to 0, and it's, it's, uh, Famous because it has all of the interesting parts there. It has an i, it has pi, it has e, it has one, and it has zero. <laughs> all right, so a lot of interesting stuff here. All right, and here is move the arrow on top so it's easier, and we could box this in. All right, so that's what we have: e to the i pi plus one equals zero. So it's uh, it looks elegant and and so on, but I think the two by two matrix is uh, more telling. All right, so that's what we have, and I'll just put this vs or actually instead of saying versus, we're not going against anyone else. Right? Or write it like this. So or in two by two matrix format, or uh, yeah, in the um, in the rotation matrix format, we get or we could write this as e to the i pi equals to cosine pi times one. Uh, first, just write it down like that. Plus, just write the notation we're used to: sine pi times i. So just rearrange this. Put it here. Put the one there. And now this equals to negative one. Yeah, negative 1 times, um, yeah, this is cosine pi is negative 1. Cosine pi is negative 1. So negative 1 times 1 plus the next one is 0 times i. So you could write it like this so that you're talking about complex numbers. And then equals 2, and I switch it over. 
into matrix format identity matrix plus zero times it by uh, or just erase it times by same thing or actually I'll just leave that zero times by i matrix like that so this is equal or equivalent to let's put it uh, just equal to so we're switching it over and now this equals two and uh, what this equals to this vanishes so all we're left with is a negative of the identity matrix so in other words we're going to have a negative one zero zero negative one like that and again uh, plug this into the identity matrix format or, or i mean uh, into the rotation matrix remember this was just the cosine pi which equals to negative one negative sine pi to zero and we have sine pi and then cosine pi. That's what we have. And so in other words, we could write e to the i pi equals to negative identity matrix. Yeah, just if you if you erase all this, just uh, just uh, cross it all out if you want. But I think when you cross out stuff like this, you're re removing information. So in this case, removing that, it's uh, you're dealing with complex numbers. In other words, a uh, two-dimensional number. You're, you have multiple properties of it. So just a basic uh, number. So this is like that. And if you shift this over to the other side, I'll uh, put it on the top arrow. Move it over to here. Not, we're not putting it into the exponent. Just putting it here. Or right, just fix that arrow. Just move it over to this side. We get uh, the famous equation. Yeah, so e to the i, i pi equals negative, uh, this is i matrix, or uh, put it here, e to the i pi plus identity matrix equals to zero. Like that. Absolutely fascinating. Stuff like that. Yeah, and just for completeness, so let's put the negative side as well, because it's interesting stuff here. So equals to uh, negative i. Um, yeah, negative the identity matrix, like that. And uh, similar to here, or e to the i pi equals to negative one, like that. Yeah, so in other words, uh, e to the i pi is just a rotation matrix that rotates a vector by 180 degrees. So let's take a basic vector like here. So if you have uh, set up here, and here's fix that up. This is the x, this is the y, and uh, you have, let's say you have, let's draw this a thick line like this. Let's say you have an arrow that's on the axis. This is, uh, let's say you have the uh, vector a, like that. And uh, here's the origin. And now it starts off from the, the origin, goes to here, and now you're going to rotate this by 180 degrees. 180 degrees is just uh, equals to pi radians. So you're going to get a vector across to here and across it like that. Oops, uh, same thing here. So basically you're going to go negative on it. <laughs> and this is going to be negative A like that. Yeah, it's negative A and this just equals to negative identity matrix of A. I'll put this uh, higher. It's going to be negative A like that, which equals to negative identity matrix of a <laughs> yes fascinating stuff so that's on the axis to make it a bit more visible i'll put this like this all right so let's say we have an angle like or a, a vector like that x y and we're going to rotate this so in other words we're just going backwards hence that negative one it just means you're going backwards on this vector so you're going backwards, uh, this is 180. This is yeah, going, going backwards by pi, and uh, or just put 180. 180 degrees, and then this is, if that's A, this is gonna be, well, a negative A, which equals two, negative uh, the bracket I, A vector, like that. <laughs> so yes, that is, and there's the origin zero. So this is actually, uh, absolutely fascinating stuff. And uh, here I just move things around so that it all fits nicely together uh, horizontally. 
move this uh, over here. And then uh, finally, yeah, this one just equals to, again, this just, uh, it, it's like your, yes, yeah, so when you have this negative uh, a, uh, this a vector, and this is uh, equals to negative the identity matrix times by this, times by a vector over here, and you're rotating it 180 degrees, it's uh, again, this is since they're equal, you're just multiplying it by e to, the, e to the i pi times by the vector. So when you multiply that vector out, it's like shifting it over to the side. And uh, basically, yeah, you're multiplying it by one then. <laughs> yeah, it's a negative i. So if you have a component like this, is uh, let's say you had uh, one, or uh, let's say you had components a and b, now you're going to go backwards. Now you're going to go negative b, or uh, actually this one back. A, B, you're gonna have negative B, negative A. You're just going backwards. That's fascinating, fascinating stuff. All right, uh, now we're pretty much uh, done the video, just the last section right here. So let's just keep going further. So uh, application to other fields. Uh, so since complex numbers are applied uh, to many different fields in mathematics and physics, including electromagnetism and quantum mechanics, uh, reinterpreting such equations as rotational matrices may provide unique insights. So yes, try investigating yourself and let me know what you discover. So the same way that we changed up Euler's formula into a rotation matrix, which is basically a 180 degree rotation. Uh, so yeah, so let me know what you discover for uh, especially electromagnetism and so on. So uh, finally, uh, we cover 2D rotational matrices, but the concept is similar when dealing with 3D, which is something I may cover in future videos, so stay tuned.